CataractCoach.com. Cataract surgery and an eye with a corneal transplant. So he previously had a transplant, so you got to do things a little bit differently here. So our patient is 74 years old, post-PK for her pedicaritis. You can see the vision's poor, a lot of astigmatism, six diopters at 160. Now here it looks like the surgeon's marking off that 160 degree meridian. Alrighty, perhaps maybe putting in a toric lens that can help with that, but six diopters is a lot. Now, here's one paresthesis, here's another. Make these more so at the limbus. You certainly don't want to involve the graft. Now, here comes some viscoelastic, that looks great. And let's see the main incision. Again, I like it a little bit more towards the limbus, a little more nicking those limbal vessels. And now, looks like peeling off a pupillary membrane there. So perhaps this patient had some prolonged inflammation here in the eye and has this pupillary membrane. And look at that. Using the capsurexis forceps, you can peel that off pretty easily. And now, maybe some viscomedriasis. Let's see what's going to happen next. I'm watching the video for the first time with you. We're going to have fun together. Now, I don't know what that was, but okay. A little bit more um, viscoelastic injection. I like that. That's a pretty good-sized pupil right there. I'd leave that be. Maybe time to do some capsurexis. Let's see what's going on on the other side. Maybe a little bit more viscomedriasis. Okay. And now, okay, perhaps more viscomedriasis. Maybe a little pupil stretching, if you will. Okay, that's reasonable too. Hey, let me tell you about retinarounds.com. Our new retina channel It's already launched. It's amazing. A new retina video every single day. If you're a retina specialist, you'll really love it. Even if you're a cataract surgeon like me, you'll learn so much. It's amazing. Remember, it's at retinarounds for YouTube. And also go to retinarounds.com, sign up for the free daily email. Now, let's see. Finally, we're on to the capsulorexis here. So getting a nice capsulorexis done. Now, in a case like this with a prior PK, you notice there still looks like one suture there in the corneal uh, graft on your screen, maybe about the 2 o'clock position. That's okay. Perhaps it was broken. Maybe it's kind of buried within the stroma there. We'll leave it be. I like this careful, careful method of getting that capsulorexis done, being very precise here. I like that. Now, in a case like this, the endothelial cell count is going to be low. In these transplanted eyes, you can't expect a normal endothelial cell count. So I like this idea of operating within the bag, maybe like a groove down the middle. Let's see, the, the, all right, a good crack, propagate that. Now we've got the video fast forwarded, and let's see, perhaps, so like a stop and chop. I like that technique a lot. Now, fortunately, this is not too dense of a cataract, so you can aspirate this with a minimal amount of phaco energy. Be sure you use some good phaco power modulations, like some burst mode or pulse mode, a relatively low duty cycle. If you don't know, if you don't know what those things are, you better go to cataractcoach.com and look it up. Now, let's see, finishing up this case, getting that nucleus out of the bag, nice and easy here. Last thing you want is a broken capsule, so be very cautious here. Be extra careful. And now, let's see. All right, maybe some cortex removal time, a little more viscoelastic. Here's a bimanual IA. I like that technique. Remember, with the pupil coming down a little bit, make sure there's no residual lens cortex left in the capsule bag. Now, my favorite part to look that up is after you get the eye oil in the bag and the eye still full of viscoelastic, use your chopper or second instrument to lift up the iris kind of 360 and look and make sure you've got everything looking nice. So here's more viscoelastic going in there in the capsule bag. That's good. And let's see, oh, a little bit of cortex that's left. Good spot there. So using the bimanual approach here to get that last bit out. That is important. That's going to cause a lot of post-op inflammation. And so this little bit of cortex, once you leave it in the eye overnight, it swells up with the BSS in the eye or the, the aqueous, and it becomes like a big cotton candy inside the eye. Now, here comes the lens. Looks like a single-piece acrylic lens. I'm not sure if the lens model, I don't think, I don't think this is the lens we have in the USA. So getting that lens delivered in the capsule bag, probably going to be a toric lens, given that you had the toric marks at the beginning. Now look at the toric marks. They kind of spread out a little bit, and that's okay. But maybe not. next time you can mark it using a cystotome and make some sharp little pokes there in the corneal epithelium. But that looks good. Lens in the bag, viscoelastics being removed, and now seal it up. Post-op day one, looking pretty good. Actually, that's a month later. Look at the refraction, a little bit of myopia, which is a good thing. Patient corrects a 20-20 vision. That is a fantastic outcome. Beautiful result here. And again, watch this patient carefully in the post op period. Make sure you quell that inflammation and protect those corneal endothelial cells. Beautiful case. Thank you for sharing. And remember, check out cataractcoach.com, our teaching website. You, there's a link there. You can submit your video too. And of course, check out retinarounds.com.